So my field of expertise is neuroprosthetics, uh, um, brain-machine interfaces, and uh, functional electrical stimulation therapy. We really make a difference for, for patients. So when you have a patient come in who can't walk, you work with the patient for 8 13 weeks, and then he walks away with a walker. That's what makes the difference for me. We do the same for hand function and other therapies. So that's where my focus is. I'm absolutely convinced that functional electrical stimulation therapy is the next big thing. Because it's non-invasive, we restore voluntary function in patients, it's very cheap, it can be delivered in every hospital. So I think this is the big one. And it's attainable, right? Stem cells and this technology is exciting, has a great promise, but the horizon of this coming is there. And I think right now, with some technologies like pressure sore, pressure monitoring, we can prevent pressure sores. We can help people restore their standing and walking. Not necessarily walking, but let's say grasping, we can do that very easily, we demonstrate it. So I think those type of things not necessarily immediately changing the, the disease or curing a disease, but rather providing technology and tools to actually play with the, with the system, neuromuscular system and, and, the, and, and the brain to actually take the maximum of already existing resources to move the patient up. And then as other things start catching up, as the stem cells become alive in a sense of, they, they show some change, then you will still use this technology because once you plug the stem cell, you still need to train the patients. You have to get the stem cells to realize what their function is and to learn what they have to do. So that's where I think doing small things which make changes of 10, 15% or 20% and we can do them right now, this is where we should focus. There has to be change in a way how we look at the medical system. We always try to save the costs, but we don't look at the lifetime of the patient. Maybe we save costs here and the patient is just three weeks shorter in a hospital, but he never goes back and regains his lifestyle, doesn't go back to work, doesn't go back to his community, because we didn't bring him to the level of function that he can do that, or she can do that. So lifelong costs then become staggering. So what we save at the beginning, maybe $20,000 or $15,000, actually turns into $2 million of long-term costs that system has to pay for. And we are not looking at the system in that way. We are very focused on how many beds we have, how many medical doctors we have, and how many pills do we sell. We don't look at the quality of life and how this looks like on the trajectory over the years for the patient. And our patients live 40 years. So every thousand dollars you save per year, it's a $40,000.